Hi everyone, Captain Master here. In the 1.9.3 patch is the start of the new hand pass, which usually brings more content. We already seen the hand pass armors and cash cosmetics, so I'm not gonna spend much time showing them around. In the cash, we got a new title. In the vault, the Alchemy of War hand pass cosmetics will be available. So the first big content we will talk about is a glider course. On Conundrum Rock and Paradox Break, there are three glider courses with easy, medium and hard difficulties. To start this glider course, you have to spend one patrol chess key. You have to fly through all the rings with glider without falling down to get the rewards. If you fail the course, you can try over and over again without spending more keys on it. The rewards seems to scale based on the difficulty. If you don't have many keys, then this glider challenge is nice because you get more value from the keys, but it just takes so much extra time for a little extra reward. During testing, I suggested the devs to make the difficult glider courses more expensive, so hard course costs 3 or 5 keys, so players can spend a bigger amount of keys and that way the increased rewards would look more significant. Next content on the list is Radiant Koshai. Radiant Koshai can be found on Paradox Breaks. You can imagine this behemoth as a combination of Koshai, Umbra Koshai, Kronvor and Falomir. The first tweak about this behemoth compared to Koshai is the front jump interrupt. In the middle of the jump, Koshai reverse its jump. If you are used to the normal Koshai, this baits you to jump and interrupt it. Right now, it actually doesn't punish you or anything when you actually trying to interrupt it. This move looks very fancy, but combat-wise, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't add anything to the fight. Thankfully, when Koshai headbutt you and stay in medium distance from it, Koshai does the turn back jump, which is interruptible. By the way, I'm using full recruit gear, that's why I'm not dealing much damage. If you are far from Koshai, it shows you with three lasers. The tail swipes animation is the same as Umbra Koshai, so one swipe to one side and double swipe to the other side. Other than these, other attacks are same as normal Koshai. When Koshai is in Aether mode, it can teleport like Valomir. The number of tail lasers are increased to five from three, and during Aether mode, Radiant Koshai spawns Radiant Prisms on the ground. Make sure to stay away from these, because after a few seconds, this explodes. After the start of Rage mode, Koshai spawns millions of Radiant Orbs around it. Koshai also does the reverse animation for some reason. These orbs are extremely annoying, because when Koshai teleports away, the orbs moves towards it instead of teleporting, so the orbs can hit you very suddenly. During Rage and Aether mode, Koshai shoots 5 lasers from the middle and 2 lasers from the side of its tail. Breaking Koshai's tail during Aether mode gives you a brilliant plume. You need 2 of these to craft the new Omnicell. With the Radiant Omnicell, you can remove the orbs easily and also protects you from the lasers for 15 seconds. And pretty much that's everything about the new Koshai variant. On the release, it doesn't get any armor or weapons, not even rumor cosmetic. Next content, as I mentioned before, the Radiant Omnicell card Artificer. It's a support Omnicell. It has four active abilities. If you send your drone to a fallen slayer, they will be revived and get the artificial aura for 15 seconds. You can revive slayers only every 90 seconds. This artificial aura restores 10 health to every slayer. If you have full health, it generates 10 shield per second. Second ability. Cleanse the slayer from every status effect and grants them aura. This doesn't work if they got frozen in frost escalation. Third ability. Mark a beamed part for 15 seconds, which takes 15% multiplicative damage from every sources. Fourth ability. Summon a radiant dome for 15 seconds. This dome blocks hostile projectiles and beams for 15 seconds and applies the aura for every slayer within the dome. Every ability has 15 second duration. The Omnicell has 20 seconds cooldown, so you can use it very often. Passive. The amount of healing and shielding is increased by 1 for every 150 health you have when activated. 
This means you get the following bonuses on these health points. With 800 health, so with 2 berserkers, you get 5.3 extra healing and shielding. With 950, so 1 berserker, you get 6.3. With 1100, without berserker, 7.3. With 1600, with tough 6, you get 10.6 extra healing and shielding, which is 20.6 per second, which is 309 over 15 seconds. With tough, extra 50% healing, you can regenerate about 450 health over 15 seconds. Even with tough, this amount seems super low in solo. In group, it might have better value, but this is very weak. The mark with multiplicative damage sounds interesting for one-shot memes, but that's it. The only cell is purely for memes. In Dauntless, roles like DPS, tank, support doesn't exist. There are good players who knows the game and doesn't need any defensive perks, they act as DPS. There are not so good players who just stack defensive perks to stay alive, they will act as a tank even if the game doesn't have a growth system. And support is for players who doesn't want to play the game. I can't say it better. They stack perks like Guardian, Medic, Mender, Engineer, and all the useless perks. And all they does is watching from the side, waiting for someone to die so they can revive them. And that's why I can't support the decision to make a support omnitzel, especially if it doesn't give any combat stats like attack speed, damage, crit, move speed, only that 15% damage on a single part. The last thing about this patch is a returning chain blade attack. The Mr. Trails, who is a fellow partner and has access to early information, sometimes more than a month before release, leaked this upcoming feature two weeks ago as a mayor chainblade change, but jokes on him, this is an absolute garbage. Well, on Reddit he did say it's just a speculation, but as a partner we know what and when it's coming, so if you say something new what no one knows, then you either spread false info or just straight leaking, and I just wanted to point this out, because in the past weeks we partners finally got our rules set by the devs and Trails was the biggest offender of this because he uploaded exploits calling them fun bugs and leaking informations like this calling them speculations. Anyways that's not I wanted to talk about. The swinging blades horizontal spin attack got re-added. Now you can use this spin by holding down the light attack. This deals damage three times while the old swinging blades deal damage seven times. This attack generates about 10% meter. I did some DPS comparisons. Spamming the swinging blades without any perk and same power as the dummy results in 215 DPS. The light attack spam results in 279 DPS. Heavy attack results in 341 DPS. And the blade spin without having Aether Rush active for the infinite stamina 365 DPS. With Aether Rush stamina bonus, this would be significantly higher. Also because the blade spin base damage got buffed from 65 to 85 per hit. The main reason this swinging blades combo was removed because it dealt too much damage, so it generated too much meter and the other combos wasn't used, so it was easier to remove it. Now it was re-added because the community wanted it back so they can clear the fauna easier. But this combo is just so weak, it fails to do even its only job. It takes 5 combo to clear 5 grooks, while all of them were in the range of the first few attacks. I know the devs still working on chain blades, so I expect this combo to work much better, because the idea of single attack is nice. Let's say you fight against Savit and you can't finish any combo, so you can just use this single attack to deal damage between two Savit attacks. Anyways, that's everything for now. Thank you guys for watching. See ya!